Okay, welcome back. Now that we have our development environment ready, and we've seen the basic structure and makeup of a page, let's look at some of the HTML tags. Now, HTML is made up of a series of tags like this that can be standalone or self-closing, but more commonly they come in a set with one opening and one closing tag. It's easier if you see an example. So let's look at a paragraph from a blog post. And this is the way it looks on the web, but behind the scenes, the HTML tag to denote paragraphs is P. So the HTML of an actual paragraph in a blog would look like P with some paragraph in the middle and then also a closing P tag with the forward slash. We won't cover all of the HTML tags, but let's break down at least the most common HTML tags you'll see on the page. So first, at the top of any HTML document, you'll see this doc type. Now the doc type is declared with an exclamation point and all capital letters, followed by the lowercase HTML. This means you're using the latest version of HTML or HTML5. You might see other doc type declarations that are similar, for example, XHTML or some much longer doc types that were used in the past, and those are just previous versions of HTML. You might see a lot of those as you look around the web at other pages. Uh, HTML is a wrapper or container containing HTML contents. So all of the HTML contents will be found inside this wrapper. If you look at the two main tags inside an HTML tag, they're the head and the body. So simply put, the contents of the head tag don't show up in the body or the visible part of the web page. The three most basic elements inside of the head section are the title, which shows up in the tab at the top of the browser window, which you can see here where the title will appear, and link tags referencing external CSS documents. We will actually look more into these later and see the different ways that you can include CSS into your page. And finally, the script tag links to external JavaScript documents. Some people prefer to put these in the bottom of the page instead of in the head here. The why behind the location is something that you can learn about later. Now, inside the body tag, this is the visible part of the web page. So when you go on a web page and you see all of this text and links, this is all inside the body tag. You can look at these headers on this blog page and see the different sizes. These correspond to the H1 through H6 heading tags. H1 is the largest all the way down to H6, which, ha which is the smallest header. The P tag, as we saw earlier, is just a regular paragraph on a page. We also have tags to section off different areas of the page. The first one we'll look at is the header. Not to be confused with the head tag, the header marks the header section of a page or it can be the header section of a section of the page or the header of a sidebar as well. The nav element, short for navigation, marks off the navigation of a page. This can be top navigation, this can be located on the side of the page or even in the footer. It just marks off a place where navigation is found. The div tag is probably the most commonly used tag in web design today. The div tag is used to section off parts of the page and also to add styles to the page just like the other sectioning elements. We also have the section tag which, as the name suggests, marks off a section of the page. The footer tag is, of course, for the footer of the page or of a section of the page like the sidebar. Usually where you find the copyright, some bottom links, and also maybe a logo. You can actually use any of these tags for any area of the page and HTML will not penalize you no matter where you put it. But it is good practice and also recommended to use them for the respective sections that they're meant for. And this is why these tags came out more recently in HTML5 to try to make it more semantic, more easy to read and promote better coding practices. Below all of these body tags, you will see the closing body tag and then finally a closing HTML tag. Now you kind of get the gist of how an HTML page is laid out 
In the next video, we're going to start a project building a lookalike page for one of our favorite websites. Mm -hmm.